You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for the reviews, and thank you to everyone who continues to support Drone You through uh, through membership. We greatly appreciate it, and we hope all of you are checking out those new classes uh, that have been posted. There's, uh, there's a lot. That said, uh, as always, my name is Paul. Yes, and as always, my name is Rob. Maybe we'll change for a day at some point, so we can't say that, but very glad to be here. And very appreciative of you being here. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Looking forward to hanging out. Definitely look forward to answering an important question today about understanding the battery test. Today's show is brought to you by our props program. Many of you at DroneU know that uh, the reason so many drone pilots choose DroneU is not just because we can help you get your 107, but we have the most ways that you can turn your toy into a tool and create profitable revenue streams for your business. Well, if you want to fast track that, you want a more organized and well chronological logical training to support either your drone business or to scale your drone business, you've got to check out our props program. Our props program was built for teams, for pilots, and for programs. Not only that, but it was also built for drone manufacturers to help them scale their training on an online platform as well recommend that you check out the props program. The pricing and everything is very different because this is supposed to be the fastest scalable means of getting you where you need to be to lower that learning curve and provide you the best information possible to be able to fly in numerous environments and do so effectively without crashing. Check it out props.thedroneu.com or you can go to propsflightschool.com. Hi, my name is Kurt Sherry Gingrasso, part of a SAR unit DiveRescue77.org's our address. Just completed the SAR course, and in it you discuss the battery load voltage test in your pre-flight check. How is the voltage determined for acceptable and unacceptable for the battery? I'm asking because we operate several different types of drones, and we'd like to implement that as our part of our pre-flight setup. All right. Uh, great question and great purpose behind the question. It's funny because my buddy Greg, who you met, we had pizza together and you guys talked batteries and doggy finders and so forth. <laughs> we were talking about it this morning after our run and uh, the types of batteries he's trying to work with. And we talked about lipos. We talked about voltage and just as yeah, it's, it's bat very interesting battery talk. <laughs> and so <laughs> it kind of pours right into this. But um, I know this is really important because a lot of people still use the percentages or the bars or whatever. And that's just not going to be r totally accurate all the time. No, 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 it's not. It's kind of, uh, you know, as we have talked about on an, you know, on an airplane, we have numerous ways of being able to tell how much fuel is really available, like having a real gauge, not just a calculation for how much miles uh, are left to be flown. And you're right, Rob. I mean, when it comes to really understanding if you're going to have a safe and healthy flight is by conducting the battery test every single time that you fly. Right. And the reason that we do this is because over time, our batteries start to fail. I mean, they only last so long. And depending on how you care for them is also going to be dependent on the endurance of the battery overall. Now, there's good news for our caller, and thank you again for sending in that question. We do greatly appreciate it. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. But when it comes to batteries, the good news is most of them are actually pretty much uh, built in the same manner. Uh, we've talked about in the way, way, way back beginnings of Ask Drone U, um, how uh, battery, uh, uh, the, essentially the formula for how batteries are built. You know, oftentimes mm -hmm. we hear, oh, it's a 4S battery. Oh, it's a 6S battery. Well, that's not always the full picture. Is it a 4S 1P? Is it a 4S 2P? And essentially that means whether the cells are built in parallel or in serial. Typically 4S means four cells in serial. Now, until some new battery technology comes out, the rule of thumb is pretty much the same. And the only batteries that I can think of that have a slightly different battery chemistry is the unique batteries, which use that lie high style battery, which is just a little higher level of voltage. But outside of that, pretty much every single battery is built in the same similar framework, I mm -hmm. think is the, the right way to say it. And right. 
you know, when we're doing that battery test, we are essentially ramming the elevation so that we maintain that that full amperage draw off the battery to better understand the true health of that battery. And so, for example, in the battery test, and you would learn this if you came to Flight Mastery or if you checked out our operations course, uh, which is also in the props program, where we talk about how you've got to ram that elevation. And if the voltage drops below 3.9 volts per cell, the typically the battery is at its end of life, meaning you're going to get 10, 20 more cycles out of a battery. Does it matter in that test if the battery is fully charged? Is yeah, it has. Yeah, it has this to is be under fully the, charged. This is under the okay. assumption that every single time they take off, they are taking off with a fully charged battery. We do not recommend taking off with a depleted battery whatsoever as the propensity for problems can go up substantially. So Got it. Now that said, whether you're flying uh, one of these... FPV batteries, or whether you are flying an Inspire 2, whether you're flying an M300, whether you're flying, um, well, Skydio doesn't even show you the battery voltage, which in my opinion is a safety hazard. But uh, Autel, same thing, you can go and click the battery and you can see the individual uh, cell voltage. And so when we talk about 3.6 volts, it should work for every single battery. So I talked about when you do the battery test, if you're below 3.9, then you're at the end of the life of the battery, right? But if you rip below 3.6 volts, that actually means that the battery is bad. You will not have a safe flight. Uh, and I even remember when we were training an NYPD officer, he had just bought three brand new aftermarket batteries and literally all of them failed because they had been sitting on the shelves too long. Mm. And so he successfully avoided a catastrophic accident by conducting that battery test. Right. So whether it's a FPV battery, um, as long as you are looking at individual voltage by cell and it doesn't drop below 3.6, you should have a safe flight. Now, there are drones like the M600 that give you essentially a uh, an aggregate number of voltage, meaning all the cells of all the batteries put together. I think it shows you like, uh, I can't remember, it's like 25 volts, 27 volts. And pretty much you are still using 3.6 as your formulaic uh, system. So if you divide the number by how many batteries there are, six, you should get an individual uh, cell voltage. Now, again, it doesn't matter what type of battery it is. The Li High batteries uh, typically are a little higher voltage, and even still, that 3.6 number works. Um, although you should be even more careful at 3.6 volts. It really works across all batteries, Rob. I mean, it's really not. Uh, it's not too difficult. It's just about understanding the calculation that is shown on screen. Right. And so sometimes, again, you're seeing all those batteries added up in voltage and you see uh, that aggregation rather than the per cell voltage. Um, but it is so critical. Uh, you know, we were doing a training for our public safety props program and talking about how on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, you can't see voltage on main screen either. But we teach them to have battery voltage on the C2 button. So essentially, as you take off, right, public safety has to do really fast takeoff and landings. And essentially, the one thing they should always do no matter what is the battery test, but you can pop C2 up. And then you see all the cells in the battery. And you can see if anyone drops below 3.6, it's time to fly home. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that. Because if we're talking about four cells, for example, you do have to pay attention to each one of the cells. And it only takes one being bad that's correct to be a problem so it really seems like when they add them all together that's a problem in terms of really evaluating what your batteries are doing or yeah. what your battery's doing yes no a hundred percent and i mean if you remember too back in the day of the phantom 3 it was a 3s battery and it would just show you the overall voltage as well but once that got down to 10.8 volts you knew it was time to fly home but you also knew if you ripped 10.8 volts on a battery test you got to bring the drone down immediately because it's a bad battery so right yeah i mean hmm. that's essentially 100 percent correct rob yeah and so most well i don't know if i can say most uh you just alluded to one that does not allow you to put the voltage on the main screen but would you say most dji does most autel does um well i would say most of the consumer drones actually now do not hmm. like the all the new mavic airs air 2s air 2 Those do not 
Um, yeah, a lot of them don't. And I think that this is a crucial safety issue. And so, I mean, Skydio even really confuses drone pilots even more because normally the way that these battery percentages have always been built is that when your battery depletes to around 30%, you know, your battery isn't going to go all the way to zero and you can just magically fly home and everything is going to be okay. Typically, these batteries cannot be depleted below, say, 15 or 20 percent, which is why the battery safety warnings are set to come on at 30 percent. So that way you have time to fly home. Right. So a lot of these new drones actually do not have the capability to see voltage on main screen. And frankly, this is the ultimate indicator for a safe flight. It's something that I think should be built in all drones. But it also means that uh, you know, DJI has had its tactics in getting people to buy more drones. I think this is just one more way to kind of muddy the waters so that way someone may or may not have a crash to buy a new aircraft, you know? Really? Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, if you think about the language in the financial community, not everyone can just turn on CNBC and understand what's going on, right? There is a vernacular for finance, which in all honesty, they could use regular terms, but it's kind of like this, well, I'm in finance and I know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you shouldn't be here. Well, and every industry has that. Uh, yes, it does. Doesn't mean it's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay. th that said, in an effort to try to, you know, um, in an effort to try to be uh, fully transparent and honest with everyone, that battery voltage is the only way to know if you are going to have a safe flight. And especially as people buy a drone, they put it on the shelf for a while, it's the only way that you're really going to be able to know. And, you know, if you don't know the language, you don't know how to do a battery test, the chances of you having a catastrophic failure are high. And the chances of you buying another drone are rather high as well. Although I will say I've, we've met some students who have had catastrophic failures and it's scary them away from buying new drones. So is it a useful strategy and tactic? Uh, it's, that's out for debate. Indeed, as <laughs> is whether or not it is a strategy. Agreed as well. <laughs> yeah, who knows? It's, it's fairly sinister, but actually nowadays it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. But yeah. anyways, hopefully that answers your question. Karshri, did I say your name right? It's a very cool name. Um, unusual for sure. But uh, I, I believe we've answered your question. If not, please follow up. We'd love to uh, dig in a little bit more if there are more questions we can answer. Definitely. And for all of you DroneU members out there, don't forget to check out some of the new classes that have gone up. Uh, you know, that operations class was just updated. We've got a bunch of new Don't Crash courses that are up as well. And right now we're working on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advanced DCC. Um, but look, if you are ready to just streamline this process of turning your toy into a tool, but a more effective tool, a skill scalable tool to allow you to build multiple streams of revenue that are scalable to build a lifelong business. You definitely want to check out that props program because we took years to develop that to really empower not only pilots, but teams and programs to make it much easier to really scale up a drone team and scale up drone pilots to give them exactly what they need to know and nothing else, but also be able to face problems in numerous environments. Because, you know, Rob, one of the things I, I, I've really never seen seen in other uh, aspects of training before is talking about uh, temperature dew point deviation and how that can affect your flight. And so, you know, with thousands of ways to crash, it seems like a no brainer to try to learn as many as possible so that you, the pilot can gain that confidence to go out to any drone job and not be worried, not be thinking about what if I'm going to do this? What if I do that? And we talk about, you know, the ideology of pilots. And I think that that's something that we really pride ourselves on. And, uh, you know, a lot of people out there have these these FAA titles, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the experience in flying, you simply don't know. And it shows. And I mean, I want to give people that knowledge, that information. That's why every instructor here at Drone U is teaching from experience because that is the only way we can give you the best information possible to avoid catastrophic failures. So uh, on that a bang. Yeah, on that note, uh, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you again for sending in the question. If you have one, ask droneu.com. Also, we have a new show coming out. I uh, just want to let everyone know, last little tidbit, it is, uh, well, I'm not going to drop the name just yet because it hasn't been published, but uh, we've got a great way for everyone to stay on top of their 107 stuff, and it will be coming out soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you again, everyone. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. 